Welcome to Not Another White Box. My name is Cameron and this is the YouTube channel that brings you all that's cool, quirky and unusual in the caravan world. As we saw in my tour of the NEC Caravan and Motorhome show in October 2022, the world of quirky caravans can be very bewildering. So to make things simple, I've chosen five of what I'm recommending as the best new designs for the 2023 model year. First up is the Knaus Azure 530, a new concept from Germany. This 7.4 meter, 1800 kilogram caravan is set to cost around 39,000 pounds in the UK, which includes a lithium battery pack as standard. This is Knaus's vision of what the caravans of the future will look like, and it even boasts self-healing side panels. What are those you might ask? Well, we'll explain that in a second. But to really get the wow factor of this caravan, let's take a quick look inside first before we talk about the technicality of its unusual construction. Immediately stepping inside, this is like absolutely nothing else at the caravan show. It's so cutting edge contemporary, it almost feels like a concept caravan. But this is something that you could buy and take delivery of right now, this year. It's Knaus's vision of what the caravanning of the future should be. And inside, it's just a totally different concept to anything that we've seen. The only thing that comes close, perhaps, is the new Adria Altea, which uses some of the same stylistic cues that Knaus have employed here. Things like um, the way that it's got fabric across the front of the seats, the way that the seats aren't quite square, they fit ergonomically. The whole caravan isn't square actually, the kitchen is cut to an angle and that is mirrored with the wardrobe opposite. But you can't argue with the styling, it is absolutely as fresh and contemporary as you could possibly get. In terms of equipment, that is where it gets a little bit more conventional. It has Alder heating system, it has a huge stainless steel sink, a large Dometic three burner range in the kitchen and this huge Dometic fridge which although some people on my channel won't have seen this, but it's been around a year now. You get a door that swings both ways. Ooh, a matron indeed. Moving to the front, we have a large fixed bed, which again, they kind of play with the, with the dimensions in here. The bed isn't square. It's kind of angled out slightly to mirror the lines that the furniture creates in the caravan. And down here at the front, Instead of curtains, it's got these panels and some of them are decorative, but some of them are actually hiding small cubby holes and spaces to store things. Again, it's just, it's a really bizarre concept and being in here, it does look very dark, but the lighting more than makes up for that. Just next to the bed at the front, you have a small washroom with toilet and shower. And there is a sink just outside in the bedroom, which again is a fairly conventional layout that we've certainly seen in Britain before but it still remains popular on the continent. Moving to the rear of the caravan, we have this huge square lounge. Like I said before, I use the term square loosely. You can see here, it's not quite square at all. This area feels a bit strange. If I'm honest, the upholstery is very firm, but again, that seems very popular with German vans. The panels that we've seen in the bedroom are all round, these sort of fake curtain panels, but these ones here actually house more storage. It's such a strange concept this, even the lighting, the way it runs through the roof. There's no conventional light units in here like you typically see in caravans from all over Europe. Ambient lighting just adorns the space and I'm finally glad it seems to be the theme this year at the NEC that caravan manufacturers have finally grasped the concept that lighting really makes a space. And this caravan possibly has some of the best lighting that I've seen at the show for sure. But of course, I mentioned that this caravan uses a construction technique that is self-healing. And I think this deserves a little bit of explanation. The sides are clad in this new patented um, sort of exterior cladding that is actually slightly soft to touch. The idea being that it, is re it reacts with heat. So if you take the caravan out and you were to drop an awning pole on the side, it would create a dent over time the heat would make this side cladding material expand and the dent would very slowly disappear. I'm assured by the literature from Knaus that this works, they've tested it, 
it's a very expensive um, way of building a caravan, but they believe it is the preferred method that we will build caravans with in the future. I have to say, this whole caravan feels extremely substantial, well put together, and a real top quality product, but you expect nothing less from the Germans, do you? In fourth place is the French La Mancelle Liberty Plaisance 490 SA. This 6.7 meter long tourer is the last word in modern day build quality. For 2023, this model will officially be available in the UK for the first time since its launch back in 2016. Already a popular favorite on the continent, let's find out what is so good about this unusual design. Immediately stepping into the Mansell, you are instantly drawn to this really unusual front end. It's almost like a restaurant booth, and this is a feature of the caravan that I've always loved since I very first saw the design. You have this huge window, which lets in lots of light, and these small shaped side windows, which can also be opened. You'll notice again that there's a lack of curtains in here, which is very much a European vibe, but we're seeing that creep in more and more in British caravans as time goes on. You know me, I'm not another white box. I love a bit of orange, so I am delighted to see this orange interior scheme here, which is warm, it's cozy, and it feels bright in here. You'll notice there's lots of ambient LED lighting around the backs of the sofas, and to be honest, there's lighting all over this caravan, from underneath the worktops in the kitchen, to up above on the ceiling, to even illuminating the top of the cupboards. It seems that Mansell have really gone the extra mile to make sure that this is an impressive, bright and cosy space. Stepping into the middle of the Mansell, you'll find the galley kitchen. And I'll be honest, this area is a little bit cosy. However, it's still very well laid out and there's plenty of room here to prepare meals. In addition to using the table and the extra workspace uh, behind you, you'll find that the shaped kitchen just allows that little bit of extra space for preparing food. There's tons of storage in here. You'll find Pull out drawers, which of course are soft shut for a nice quality touch, and even things like this sliding rack, which just make accessing what's in them a lot easier. And would it be French if it didn't have a wine holder built in? And here is specifically listed as the place to keep your bottles of wine. Just behind the kitchen, you'll find this absolutely enormous Thetford fridge, which really takes up a lot of space in the kitchen but there's plenty in here, uh, plenty of room in here to put everything that you would need for a weekend away. Opposite the kitchen is the washroom. Now it's got this rather charming shutter door on it, which opens to reveal quite a large space actually. There is ample room in here for a shower, and the nice thing about it is it has curved walls, which just help to minimize the impact on the space that this washroom has. The best thing of all is this sliding partition, which pulls over to reveal the shower, to give you enough space to have a shower without wetting everything that is around the toilet area, which has long been the drawback of an all-in-one wet room. Now, this design detail from Mansell really comes from the motorhome world, and I'm yet to see it in a caravan until now. So again, plus points to Mansell for being ahead of the curve with a really useful and interesting design feature. Back here in the bedroom, though, you'll find a rather large wardrobe for storing um, hanging goods, but also a cupboard underneath. But in addition to that, there is a wardrobe either side of the rear bed which has shelving and storage, which is accessible from the front or the side. Each side of the bed has a space to charge the phone, light switches, mains power, and 12 volt power. But I have to say, as fixed beds in caravans go, this bed is huge. <laughs> it must be at least a queen size, if not a little bit larger. Without getting the tape measure out, I'm just saying, this mattress feels a lot wider than a lot of the offerings in British caravans that have this layout. But the bed is really high up and you might be wondering why. And that's because without the bed being right up in the rafters like you get in a motorhome, there is an externally accessed locker as well as under bed storage. 
that allows you a huge space under here to put a lot of your camping gear. But to not waste the space any further, Mansell have even added this unusual little drawer at the front, which I've just never seen anything like it before. It makes a good use of the space. My only criticism about this bedroom is it would be nice if you could fold the bed back slightly like you can in some of the British vans. But to be honest, the trade-off here is you've got a one-piece mattress with a bed that you don't have to keep remaking every time you pull it out or push it back. And to be honest, although it's a little bit tight squeezing around these sides of the beds, it's still accessible. And for the size of the van, this van is not very long at all. It's a fairly short single axle caravan that makes it easy to tow and easy to pitch and easy to store. But they've really worked wonders with how they've played about with the space in here to just make it feel so much bigger than it actually is. Stepping outside of the La Mancelle Liberty Plaisance, it's such an unusual and striking design, but that is not all there is to it, for it's not actually constructed out of aluminium, but instead of polyester. Now this is a material that's very popular on the continent and it means that they can keep the weight down and keep the strength up but also make it more durable and resistant to damage knocks and dents from awning poles etc. It means it's got a slightly unusual finish when you stroke it. It's not as cold as aluminium and I've just realised there how odd that sounds to go around stroking the sides of caravans. I don't advocate that you start doing that now. <laughs> At the back end here we've got this large access locker which we mentioned inside goes under the double bed but the final touch which you can't see very well here unfortunately is the curved rear panel which again just adds to the style interest of the Mansell caravan but really the focus has to be the front end at the point which I'm just going to take you to show now. This point here is finished neatly with another ABS plastic molding, which comes to a point. I know some people on my channel in the past have perhaps criticized this slightly for looking unusual or a bit like a horse box, I've heard people say, but it's so unusual. And don't forget, it aids with towing. It makes it easier to tow, less likely to sway on the motorway, and just does a great job of funneling the wind around it as you're going down the road. Like I said before, it's got the superior Alco Delta axle fitted, which means it really does tow very well. And as someone who's really keenly followed the La Mancelle since its inception in 2016, 2017, I can absolutely assure you that the French caravanning press absolutely love this caravan. And it's also quite popular in Germany, which to me is a fantastic seal of approval for a French design when the Germans will take it and buy it in mass. <laughs> Overall, it's a fantastic caravan and I'm really glad I've got to see one in the flesh. In third place, we have an old favorite that gets a new nostalgic makeover for 2023. This is the Ariba Touring Familiar 310 in the trim known as Legend. This iconic 4.8 meter tourer tips the scales at just over 900 kilograms fully laden and is the cheapest caravan on the list here at £21,880. For me, it is wonderful to see a manufacturer such as Ariba really lean on their huge heritage and take lessons from the past to design a new caravan that will last well into the future. So many new concepts at the moment are pretty much a stab in the dark from a design point of view. So I hope that more manufacturers, especially in Britain, will start exploring their heritage more and using those long forgotten ideas to improve their new designs further. Now, this is again a new style for 2023 that's sort of been on and off around with the Ariba range, but it's firmly, they're firmly embracing their heritage with this one and going for the full stippled aluminium effect on the outside and the traditional all white exterior with the red banding, which was just so synonymous with Ariba's from the 60s and 70s. It's got a much more toned down appearance to the rest of the range. It's missing a lot of the kind of the smart elements that make the others seem really um, sort of lavish and expensive, but that's to its merit. 
to me this looks classic, it looks timeless, it looks just like a Heritage Ariba should. It still retains the nice new rear panel on the back with the round lights and the uh, chrome work grab bar. Stepping inside, that traditional approach to the design continues, but it's got a contemporary flair. There's wood grain, there's fairly plain upholstery. We've still got these amazing little lamps that I am, if you can't tell by now, quite obsessed with. We've got the upper cupboards framed in this kind of walnut color. And the same little kitchen that you'll see in traditional Arebas. And this would be the equivalent to a, a familiar, I believe. So we've got a little dinette at the front and a, again, a huge five foot double bed at the back. It's very cozy, very stylish, and certainly something worth taking a look at. Runner up on our list is the Swift Base Camp 2, which for 2023 has its first major cosmetic overhaul since its launch way back in 2016. This tiny Tourer is just 5.1 meters long overall and weighs 1,043 kilograms fully laden. The new model price starts from £23,995. If you've watched Not Another White Box for a while, you'll know that I'm a big, big fan of the Base Camp range. And for 2023, the entire range has had the biggest amount of updates that it has had since it was launched way back in 2016. You'll notice immediately with this impressive revolving Base Camp 2 that all the graphics outside have changed for this year. We've gone from the traditional orange Base Camp favorite to this new blue teal color, which is equally as cool as impressive. You might also notice on the back is this new GRP molding on the door, which unfortunately doesn't actually do anything, but just adds a bit of decorative flair. You'll spot when it spins back round that there's two more on the front that fill in two of the gaps that were created by the previous GRP mouldings, which again is just a little detail that just adds a little bit of style and flair to this very utilitarian but very impressive practical caravan. This is an established favourite in the range and this was the original base camp that was launched in 2016. There aren't really any changes to the model in the basic layout or anything, but you will find, again, there's the aforementioned graphics that have changed. There's also the fact that the entire range now comes with an Alco stabilizer hitch as standard, which I think was slowly introduced last year, but is officially part of the spec this year. This Base Camp 2 is demonstrating the RVA inflatable awning, which is an optional extra with all Base Camp models. You'll notice with the rear door, which is quite unusual, they've had to build this um, awning specifically that is tailored to this model. Now, I've seen lots of base camp owners have all kinds of different designs, but this has to be one of the coolest awnings around. From the impressive porch space inside to the little wind cheating bit on the outside, it's a great practical awning, which I've checked with the base camp owners club. People do give it the thumbs up. Moving quickly inside the base camp too. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I looked at it fairly in depth in my tour of the NEC in February, a link to which you'll find here. The Base Camp 2 remains the same inside apart from the change to the new colour schemes. You'll notice that the favourite Base Camp Orange is still a little bit featured inside the caravan, but the blue is now creeping in with the upholstery. The big changes um, are mainly also in the bathroom. It just all adds to the contemporary spacious feel of this model. And people are saying the great thing about this range is there's no fake wood. There's no curtains gathered up around the windows. It's kind of void of anything that makes British caravans a little bit old fashioned and just not completely cool if we're honest. <laughs> This is a kind of a modern, clean approach to caravan design, inside and out, and I'm a big fan. So first place goes to a design that treads the line between breaking the mould but also appearing conventional and familiar. It's the La Mancelle Fantasy 360CL, manufactured in France. This is the smaller sibling of the Liberty model that I previously mentioned. But the 1000 kilogram 5.53 meter long Fantasy is designed for carefree caravanning. The devil is in the detail with this one, so let's see what makes it worthy of being named the Not Another White Box Design of the Year 2023. 
at the front end of the Fantasy is this dinette. Now, it's actually a generously sized dinette and I'd say you could quite comfortably fit three people around it um, to enjoy dinner together. Above your head is a huge, very, very deep overhead locker. The storage in here is really great. But perhaps one of the most interesting things about the Fantasy is these round porthole windows. How cool are those? They're so unusual and just bring a different dynamic to the interior of the caravan. I think they're great. Although you might be looking at this thinking it's aimed at uh, you know, the cheaper end of the market, there's actually a lot of details about this caravan uh, that make it a really classy and actually really substantial feeling product. I'm told as well that the particular wood finishes that they use inside are some of the most expensive that you can put in a caravan. And certainly feeling them, it does not feel like photo finished wood. It's got a real grain, it's got kind of a relief to it. It actually feels like a proper quality piece of furniture. Stepping into the middle of the caravan is the small washroom. And again, we've got a sliding door just like the Liberty, but it's not quite the same design. Again, to keep the price down, um, they've decided to alter the bathroom and it doesn't have the sliding partition, which is such a great feature of the other caravan. But that's not to say that there isn't something in here that's quite unusual again. To free up more space in the shower, which to be honest, for a wet room of this size is already a fairly generous space, you can actually completely remove the bathroom sink to create a little bit more extra space for using the shower. I have to admit, out of all the caravans that I've ever seen, I've never seen that before. The kitchen in this tiny little Fantasy 360 is actually slightly larger than the one in the Liberty, but we obviously don't have that really tall fridge freezer. What it has instead in the side of the kitchen is a compressor fridge. Now this is a new technology that's predominantly used in the campervan market because it's an expensive technology. And having a little chat with the director of the Mansell company, he assured me that their caravans are not built to be cheap. They are built to be the best that they can be. So this particular model is aimed at people who wish to travel further, might be stopping en route, etc. So the compressor fridge that runs from the 12 volt battery system or from the car only is a really, really great way of doing that. For, if you don't really know about the technology, I'm not gonna to spend too long talking about it, but in a nutshell, it is the best refrigeration system that you can have in a caravan. But the reason we don't all have them in British caravans is the cost. A compressor fridge of this size, to buy it outright, is somewhere between two and 3,000 pounds. So you can see why they're not fitted in Britain that much. But what it does is it runs off the battery and it works with the same principle of your household fridge. The battery works to get the fridge down to temperature and then it cuts the motor off. And then as the temperature increases in the fridge, the motor will only come back on just to get the temperature back down again. They're extremely well insulated to keep the heat out and keep them cold inside, but they just run off the 12 volt battery. And I've been told by everyone who's had them that you can run it for a week or longer if you have a solar panel without making any dent on the battery condition whatsoever. There are no prices confirmed yet because these models are yet to be altered for a British spec. I'm told that the British versions next year will receive several tweaks, including fitting a full oven and cooker um, where possible, in line with what we're used to in Britain. But actually, it's almost a shame that the British market dictates all this equipment and weight because this caravan as a concept in its own right is such an incredible little thing. And that low weight, that ease of towing, the low frills, the ease of setting up, just the lack of having to bring everything plus the kitchen sink on holiday with you, to me is the spirit of adventure of caravanning, not being tied to carrying all this stuff that we love to do in Britain on campsites. So this to me is a bit of a different concept and certainly something worth checking out. Stepping outside of the La Mancelle Fantasy 360, I'm gonna talk you through some of the details that make this caravan so special. Starting right at the very front, it has, of course, an Alco stabilizer hitch, which is a fairly standard fitting now, and a gas strut assisted handbrake. But it also has this huge gas bottle locker, which, unlike a lot of exterior lockers that you see on caravans now, I'm thinking things like the Bailey Discovery, 
This one is made to really ergonomically fit in with the caravan and it certainly harkens back to the kind of exterior gas lockers that you see on the sort of vintage caravans that I love to feature on this channel. It's really nicely styled, it's curvaceous, it fits in with the design really well and just like the caravan which feels extremely sturdy, the gas locker feels a really substantial piece of kit as well. Unusually for such a small caravan, it has an onboard water tank at the front. It's not a particularly large one and I'm not 100% if it will remain in the British spec next year, but it's a useful thing nonetheless. The idea being if you're out touring with this model and you wish to pull up at the side of the road and make lunch, you can wash up, you can wash your hands, etc. The onboard water tank is a really great addition for that. Like pretty much every caravan now, it's got LED lighting throughout, inside and out. But perhaps the most interesting thing about the entire Mansell range, including the Liberty and the Fantasy, is that they are constructed completely of polyester. It's an entirely bonded construction that creates a polyester monocoque, which is incredibly strong and durable. Unlike a typical aluminium um, clad caravan that has bonded construction as well, this is just possibly the strongest method of constructing a caravan today. Add in the curves, which again enhance the strength. There's no corners where um, you know, the stresses have been towed down the road can you know, they always try and find the corner of the caravan and open up those seams. The curves just help to transmit those harsh road vibrations to just ensure that the shell retains its ability to keep the water out. So there we have it. My list of the top five best new Not Another White Box designs available in Britain in 2023. Let me know your thoughts on these designs in the comments section below or if you have any suggestions for me to consider for the list in 2024. If you've enjoyed today's video, please do subscribe to the channel and check out my other content. Also, be sure to follow Not Another White Box on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter for more caravan design talk and news of new models. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.